when we look at the ocean, we can often see another world. It inspires a sense of mystery, of secrecy, as we wonder what goes on beneath the waves. And there is certainly much out there for the adventurous to find. A spectacular variety of life forms call these waters home. And for human divers, they provide wonder and beauty that can be found only a short distance from the shore. But the organisms that live here swim through more than just water. There is an entire aspect of the ocean that has long gone unseen, too small to make out with the naked eye. Even when the ocean seems empty, there is still evidence of its life, great and small, all around us. We just have to know how to find it. Our relationship with the ocean has long been very one-sided. We exploit its resources and litter it with our waste, and our interference with its ecosystems has negative effects upon the entire food web. But there are few organisms as heavily affected by mankind as the ocean's top predators, most particularly the sharks. As we come to learn more about the ocean, people are gaining a greater understanding of the important role sharks play in the ecosystem. And because of this, conservationists are beginning to put greater effort into protecting these ancient mariners. I started my graduate work in 1960. I was not interested in conservation because there was apparently no problem. I've been studying sharks for about uh, 20 years and I study them all the way from reefs of the Caribbean all the way to the Hong Kong shark fin market. Yeah, I've been interested in sharks ever since I was a kid because where I grew up on the islands, shark is, you know, part of our life. I've been associated with the shark lab for almost 10 years now. Overall, 20 years I've been working in marine conservation around the Caribbean. But keeping these charismatic predators safe is not that easy. And the first major challenge is obvious, finding the subjects. Typically shark research and um, works with larger animals, um, it, you generally have to, to go out and catch them and it can be quite a costly and logistically um, difficult thing to actually do. Sharks are not exactly like poppies in a field. Many of them are rare, elusive, and move around over vast stretches of the ocean. Current methods include longlining, leaving baited hooks in the ocean and hoping a shark will eventually be caught so it can be studied. But this method can be touch and go. Not only does it require a lot of resources and patience waiting for the subject to turn up, it is also invasive and it can cause stress to the animal. Moreover, it is biased because you can only record what you catch. Most sharks feed on fish, therefore fish are caught in large numbers and used for no other purpose than to attract a shark. This is wasteful, especially since scientists often have to bait the water with many fish before even one shark turns up to investigate. Currently, there are very few widely used methods of shark monitoring that don't involve catching. But that may be about to change. Professor Stefano Mariani of the University of Salford and PhD student Judith Backer 
are looking into a new method of data collection that could revolutionise shark conservation by collecting environmental DNA. Environmental DNA is quite literally DNA that you can find in the environment. And this is because every organism, such as these sharks and other fish that are swimming around behind me, leave behind organic material in their environment. So you can think about shed skin cells, mucus, saliva, uh, sperm and eggs, blood and metabolic waste. And all this organic material contains DNA from the animal that it came from. Then you can actually retrieve all these pieces of, of DNA and identify exactly what type of organisms were present in that environment. So they decided to test their hypothesis at the Blue Planet Aquarium in the UK. The collection of this environmental DNA provides researchers with a non-invasive, rapid and cost-effective method of collecting biological samples from large portions of the environment without ever having to catch a single animal. And our research uh, addresses the development of an environmental DNA approach specifically for sharks. If we could really detect them from the environment by simply getting some water and identify the DNA, that would be an incredible uh, game-changing uh, approach. Prior to this collaboration, I hadn't actually heard about environmental DNA at all, but as soon as it was explained to me, I just thought, wow, that's, that's an amazing technique. For the aquarium getting involved in um, you know, some really interesting research, like this is great because you know, it, it, it helps to promote a message that sharks need conservation. It's one thing to collect DNA samples from a tank but it's a whole other thing to test it out in the field. So Judith set out to several places in the Caribbean to test the hypothesis out in the open ocean. And the subjects of her research are here in abundance. Collecting shark environmental DNA samples only requires collecting water samples from the locations that you're interested in, in knowing which pieces of sharks are there. So we have used a special water sampling device to collect water samples from different locations and different depths. The sharks were never bothered by the sampling device in the slightest. In fact, they were quite inquisitive and some even nosed at it curiously, which is a far better reaction compared to the stress of being caught. Sometimes we even just use a regular water bottle while snorkeling or sometimes when the weather was too rough, for example, we just used the water bottle and scooped up water next to the boat. Sampling took place in the presence of numerous species of sharks, including great hammerheads, Caribbean reef sharks and nurse sharks. As well as in multiple locations where there wasn't a shark in sight. But of course, collecting the water is only the first step in the process. The next stage takes place on land. The water must be run through a special filter with very tiny pores, which will sieve the water out and leave the DNA behind.
Each filter must then be carefully stored away for later analysis. But avoiding disturbance to the sharks is not the only major benefit this method has to offer. With this eDNA project, there's the potential for sampling waters in areas that are very difficult to capture or see sharks. So it might be a new way of, of essentially monitoring the um, shark populations in areas that have previously been unmonitored. And it could be a very effective tool that's a lot cheaper and logistically easier to do. Yes, I think it's interesting. Whether it will be successful, I can't say, but that's science. There are a lot of assumptions going on there. I'm really fascinated by the possibility that we could just go to different places and take buckets of water and filter it, and maybe even get a sense of the density, the differences of density between different places. I think if we could do that, that would revolutionize our understanding of where sharks are and where the sort of hot spots of diversity are. Seems like a really great idea and I'm looking forward to reading more about it. This is not really my expertise, but I think that it has a lot of applications, uh, especially when you only have a short period of time to sample an area. Let's say it was 100% successful. You could, uh, you could do that with all the fish in the area and get, a, get an idea of the entire, uh, entire biomass and the entire biodiversity of an area. I, I'm skeptical, but I'm open. At its core, shark conservation has always been tricky, not least because a large portion of mankind is still extremely fearful of them. But in recent years, things have started to change. My attitude towards shark has uh, actually been enhanced because um, you know we find learn more about them, you know, being predators and being an important part of the ecosystem. So it just makes it more even fascinating to, to study sharks. The um, general perception of sharks in the Bahamas is schizophrenic. The government thinks that sharks are a good thing and should be protected. The nation is a shark sanctuary. But I would say in general, People are still frightened of sharks in the Bahamas. Bimini's perception of sharks, I think, is a bit indifferent. Um, it, it depends on the experiences that they've had with them. You know, we've had lots of children that have come over here and, and done open days, and they've they've seen and worked with little baby sharks, and they they seem to be really excited by them and interested by them and, and not scared of them. However, a lot of the older generation, they are actually quite scared of them and, and don't really like them at all. Uh, over the years, yeah, especially over the last 10 years, we've seen a lot of changes. Uh, more people are respecting sharks now and appreciating their presence and doing their part to preserve them and making sure that they have a longer existence. With her work in the Caribbean complete, Judith now has to head back to the UK to see if her hard work has paid off. Back in the lab, we have to extract the DNA from the filters that we brought back from the field. But of course, now there's going to be DNA from many different organisms on the filter that have been in the vicinity. Think about bacteria, viruses, two corals, and maybe even whales. But luckily for us, every organism has its own specific DNA sequences that will allow us to identify what organism the DNA came from. And if you're specifically looking for sharks, you know, as in our case, uh, you have to use a special technique that will only amplify the shark DNA in the soup of DNA that's on the filter right now. This DNA will get sequenced and analyzed, and then we can determine which pieces of sharks the DNA came from. All they can do now is await the results. And now, the moment of truth. Did it work? Oh, please. We did so it. So it worked. We did it. <laughs> we did it. Come on. As we hoped, the method worked. We have actually identified DNA from multiple species of sharks.
sharks from the water samples that we took from the ocean. And it's actually quite amazing that these animals leave behind these traces or these genetic fingerprints uh, wherever they swim around in the water and that we can actually collect these fingerprints and analyze them. So now the challenge for us and for every other researcher interested in this area is to find the right questions. Which part of the sea we should investigate? How we're going to reach a point where something can be more automated? And how we're going to create maps? And why are we going to create maps of biodiversity across the oceans? This is the next step. Now we are on this trajectory and I really think that these traces, this biological dust that we find in the sea is going to lead us there. Obviously, biologists will still need to capture animals to learn specific aspects of their life history and physiology. But there is something astonishingly empowering to know that all life in the ocean is just one bottle away from being revealed. There is still so much we have to learn, and with continued collaborative effort, researchers can ensure that sharks will keep leaving traces for millions of years to come.